What are the most important issues for the pharmacy team? The main area we look at is the difficulty they have in accessing medication. This clinic is one that does not have a pharmacy attached to it. So it makes it very, very complicated for me and my students to try to arrange for them to get the medication that they need. So what we have done to try to assist with the access is we design a, what we call a medication formulary. But in there, it shows the drugs by pharmaceutical class. It could have things that's like hyper, hypertensive medication, asthma medication, diabetes medication. And under there is a list of discounted drugs that they can receive. We're unable to provide them free medication in all cases. Most of the time, it's a discount. So rather than paying what you and I may pay for full fees for medicines that may not be covered by insurance, we try to find discounted medications. So they offer a number of those programs at pharmacies and different places in the country. Now, also, we try to enroll them in those what we call indigent drug programs that are set up by the pharmaceutical industry. So they have certain medications that they can complete all of this paperwork that allows them to get those medicines sent to their home. So we have mostly the anticoag the new anticoagulation medication is in that group that we use a lot of, we request a lot of that. You, you mentioned adherence there. Are adherence problems common? And, and if so, what can you do? So then adherence is pretty straightforward. So what we pretty much try to do there is to try to improve their ability in taking medication. If they can bring them in to show you what they're taking, that's good. But if not, try to find out, do they have enough medication to get them between the office visits that we schedule for them? And if not, then we work on, the second part of that would be working on refills. How do we get refills done? Now in our case, the... The pharmacy students and myself can determine that they need refills. We can write the prescription for the refills, but the medical team that's there, we have to go to them and they have to sign the prescription. And then we go back and we counsel the patient on it, on things related to what it's used for, what side effects you need to look out for, different little uh, basic things of mechanism, how it works and things of that sort so that they understand how to take it. Mm -hmm. Mm. And are there other things that you do also to improve overall health care? Now, we also do medication therapy management. The main thing there is the pharmacy team or that I work with is responsible for reconciling the medication list. So we want to make sure that there is no medications on the list that they don't need. I was there yesterday and I made some notes on one. We had a lady come in yet, um, yesterday. She had ciprofloxacin, vitamin D, she had omeprazole for her stomach problems, and she had a drug called phenazopyridine. So I looked at it, and it had a date that she got these meds on the list, says 2015, and I said, oh my gosh, this, she's not, she can't be still taking that. So, so I told the student, look at this, now we need to find out which meds we need to take off of this electronic list, so we can make sure we got an accurate list of medications. So I told her most likely the Cipro was for some kind of urinary tract infection combined with the phenazopyridine. So I was correct, which means they don't take those for long term. That's the short term use. So we, we knew those should come off the list. So we ended up getting those off the list. So she was really on, only on two medications. So that's, and we, do, and we do the reconciliation every day that we come in. I have one group of students that does nothing but that. So the, the, the fourth thing we do is education. Almost every patient that we see, we focus on education. Now, from our perspective, we're looking at things from the pharmacy end on drug, proper use of medication. We try to explain expected adverse effects. We look at whether they've had reactions. We also determine, try to determine if the medicines is working or not working. We look at certain subjective things that they tell us. And we look at data that we can look at that may be in the chart as well. And we try to determine whether this is working or not. And, and it's not uncommon for us to find some things that appear to not be working. So if that's not working, we will make a recommendation to the medical staff to switch the medication to something else. We need to get these, we need to 
make sure we have some good evidence that we need, we, we need to switch medications. I don't, I'm not one who likes to change medicines too quickly. I like to make sure that, it, well, first of all, if it's a safety issue, yes, we'll change it. If it's something related to harm to the patient, we're going to change it. But if it's something that looks like um, their, their cholesterol levels isn't going down fast enough, I like to wait. Let's just wait on that. We'll see. We'll have them come back. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is d- d- disease states management. We assist with, with uh, just helping with them manage certain disease states. The most common ones we see in there is hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, and so forth. Now, what we, what we do there is try to provide a, a consultative type service. So if they want us to come see the patient too, we, are, we can either see them the same night that they're, they are there, or we schedule them to come back to see just the pharmacy team. Mm, very interesting. It must be a great learning environment for your students. 